So my two kids are 10 years apart. So I forgot. I, I forgot the pain and the morning sickness. You forget. And I had him and he cried. Not even a day old. He cried continuously for 48 hours. And I'm thinking to myself, I don't remember this with the first child. Two years ago, uh, I would look at her and think, well, what hope does she have? All of the implications of having a diagnosis like this is, what does it mean for her life? They said something is slowing his brain down and they don't know what it is, therefore they can't treat it. And I said to them, what does this mean for him and his development? And they said, he wouldn't necessarily get better. We probably will, will notice him just getting worse. No eye contact, like we would lose him. Like if the TV was on or something, he would just be like gazing at the TV and, and you could do this, you could talk to him, you could look right at him and he would just look right through you. Nine months, I went to her family doctor, and my family doctor, I don't know how she knew, and she said to me, you should get on the waiting list of getting tested, or you should think about being tested. And I'm like, oh my God, he's nine months. Are you kidding me? He's a baby. We moved twice by the time she was 18 months old. So there was a lot, a lot going on, and I didn't notice too much out of the ordinary until that age. Then when she was around 18 months or so, then we started to notice things were off, like she wasn't starting to speak, she wasn't, uh, she had never really crawled very much. He was premature, so they always said he would be a little delayed up until about two years. So there were things like, you know, his fine motor was a little off when he was little. He gave us a lot of trouble moving on for eating to chunkier foods. He had digestive issues from birth. At about six to eight months, the pediatrician finally uh, diagnosed him with uh, acid reflux or something. The only thing I remember that really, really bad in the first two years was he was so constipated. It was just, every day was he was just constipated. So that was the beginning of his life. When he was younger, we would take him to the mall and he was so sensitive to lights and sounds, he would spend the whole time with his eyes covered crying because he couldn't take the lights, the sound, it was just too much. We couldn't take him anywhere. He would just, if he would just shut down completely. He just lost it. Like he literally just fell on the ground screaming and crying, in inconsolable. You couldn't touch him, you couldn't do anything and I just let him go. That was the first time I remember seeing him act like that and it, it just started, that was, and it became common. When she would be asked questions, um, she would seem not to be engaged or even know that a question was being asked. Often, if she did recognize that it was a question, she would kind of scratch her head and go, hmm, hmm, think about it. So she, you knew she was trying to process it and trying to um, take in information and, and come up with an answer. Uh, but she just couldn't in most cases. She was diagnosed with uh, high functional autism, Asperger's, in August, just before she started kindergarten. We started taking him to speech and language um, pathology, and they're the ones who suggested maybe do an ADOS test, which is uh, testing for autism. So we did that, and we were put on a ton of waiting lists. Yeah, that took a while. Took, everything takes a long time. Yeah. When he was diagnosed, I said, you know, what will he be like? Will I, you know, have to take care of him for the rest of his life? And the, all the answers I would get would be, I don't know. We have to wait and see. I don't know. It was never positive. Not even maybe two weeks later, he completely lost his eye contact. He would not respond to his name. He would just run around in circles, spinning and spinning. Spinning, he started flapping. Lining up his toys, he wouldn't play with any toys anymore. He wasn't interested and it's like we kind of lost our child. In the beginning, it's frustrating. I was mad at the world. I was mad at God. I was like, why me? The guilt, oh my God. What did I do wrong? Everything's my fault, right? Everything's my fault. What did I eat? I was actually dissecting every little thing I did for um, nine months of my pregnancy and the nine months before. What did I do? It's, it's my fault. 
And I'm still in denial, honestly. I'm still in denial. I hate that word, autism. After that, those initial assessments and then getting a, an actual uh, diagnosis of, of Asperger's, the, there weren't very many solutions put forward. So you're kind of on your own when you get that diagnosis. I tried everything everyone told me to do. I'm not a professional in this area, so you have to trust and listen to the professionals. You're just bombarded with all these things. Um, with this treatment and that treatment and, you know, this therapy and this cost this and this cost that and you don't know what to do. It's just one more thing as a parent of someone with autism that you look and go, is this just someone trying to take my money? You need the diagnosis to, to be on the waiting list for services. So to get the diagnosis is anywhere from two to four years anywhere from two to four years. So you need that, and then you're on the waiting list for the services. That's anywhere from three to four years. So you're gonna tell me that worst case scenario, he's gonna be what, eight, nine, before he gets his first therapy session? They talk about this early intervention is so important to autism, but there, and this is what used to frustrate me, is there really is no early intervention when it comes to these therapies like IBI and ABA because they're not getting it early. They're all on wait lists. But he was about two he when was, we started that process of wondering yeah. what was going on. 18 months, like, yeah. yeah to 18 two. months to yeah. two and it was four before you actually got a piece of paper in your hand or somebody saying, To yeah. which you're just put on another waiting list. Yeah. I wish they told me that, Linda, there's this option. I, there's this other way that you could help him. You, sh you know, there is this biomedical treatment out there, you should try it. Nobody talks about this. I went to a conference that was put on last year. It explained a lot of what was happening and the consequences of what was happening in Jacqueline's biochemistry. Sat down with a naturopath and started investigating biomedical treatment for her. We discovered a naturopathic doctor who deals with kids with neurodevelopmental disorders. It took about two weeks as opposed to two years to get in to see somebody and to get some answers. Our naturopath was able to make an assessment and go, okay, here's the parts that are, are not working right and here's what we can do to biomedically support those, those processes and those areas of development. When I went to see her, I really didn't talk about the speech. I just said, he's miserable. He's, he's screaming all day. He, he has diarrhea. He can't sleep at night. He's grinding his teeth. And she's telling me all this has to do with his autism or speech delay. And I'm like, I totally, totally get it. And we started realizing changes, I think even in two weeks but not until you know um, the methyl B12, the probiotics, that was the other piece of the puzzle that started to bring the language out and the explosion of language that took him from about 50 words to about 350 words in the first six months. Within maybe a week, we noticed differences. His eye contact slowly started coming back. He was engaging more with other people as well as us. First month on, everything she asked me to do, nothing, no change, but like any diet, it's not going to happen in the first month. The second month, he completely changed. That's when the school called the teacher and said, Linda, this is like a miracle, what did you do? Her language development suddenly went off the chart. Now she was able to respond and interact with you. Within the span of days, you could see a drastic improvement in the functioning of that area of her brain. He knew his entire alphabet. We had no idea. He knew his numbers from 1 to 20. We had no idea. He knew all of his colors. He knew all of his shapes. And that was within just a very short time period after we started giving him the B12. And he's been progressing ever since. For a kid who probably ate 10 or 11 items in total, all of a sudden he, he had a food explosion. and. You know, you could see him enjoying stuff more, mm. you know what I mean? Like, and, and that means not just with food, but with everything. It's such a huge, drastic, fast improvement. I cannot tell you the difference it has made on Dylan. Personally, I think this is more important than any other 
therapy out there. If you met her, as most people around the neighborhood do, would have no clue that yep. two years before this was a child who couldn't speak. The impact and the change of, of what's gone on with her is just amazing. Jacqueline is coming out all of a sudden. She's coming out of her shell. He's still doing really well. He's progressing. He's changing. Every day he does something new. And socially he's, uh, he's getting better um, around kids and so forth. Throughout the progression, it's always been a pill. There's been nothing that has put us back. These days, he's so happy. He's a completely different child, completely different. You know, there's no cure for autism, um, and there's not one solution that's gonna fix everybody out there, but there's no harm in trying. I wish I started earlier. I think it would have been improved more. This change, which sits on the back of the biomedical intervention that's been done to her, is going to enable her to do anything. So it's that you, you realize it more once you get to a certain point. Whereas at the start, yeah, you're hopeful, but you don't see the fruition. You don't see where it's going to go and what the impact's going to be. And then once you reach a certain point, you realize, wow, this is going to make a huge difference because it already has and you can start to see the things that you can extrapolate from that in the future. Yeah. I would definitely say look into it, get some information. It can't hurt. Just sit with a biomedical doctor and, and have a discussion and, and see what it's about. There's nothing harmful about it at all for your child and the best thing it can do is help them pro progress even further. The changes were so drastic, it was unbelievable, it's undeniable. I feel totally confident with what we're doing uh, and what's been done and with the help that we're receiving and I'm very grateful for it. We got our smiley kid back and we really haven't lost him since. If you asked me this a year ago, I would be on the floor um, screaming, it's not gonna happen. I see the light, I see hope, and you can't live without hope. <laughs>